Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tarr and welcome to my YouTube channel. So as you can see, I finally got my hands on the M1 Max chip and I can't wait to show you what gaming performance this MacBook is now capable of. I've been listening to all of your comments and requests and I've put together a list of six games to which I'll be benchmarking and testing out today. The specific M1 Max chip I have is the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU and 32 gigabyte RAM version. So the very first question I'm going to answer today is, can the M1 Max chip run Crisis? And yes, I can definitely say it can run Crisis. So this game used to melt PCs back when it was released in 2007. And even for years after that, you couldn't really build a PC that could run this game properly. But thankfully we can run it quite well on the M1 Max. This is quite impressive considering that we are actually running the Windows version of the game, which is being run through the compatibility layer called Crossover. I'm going to leave a link in the description for my tutorial on how to get Windows games and Crossover games to run on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So in terms of the graphics settings, I basically used the high preset and turned everything up to the high setting. I'm also using the resolution 1900 by 1200. I normally record in 1080p, but I was having issues using my external monitor to force the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So overall, we're getting a frame rate between around 65 to 90 frames per second. And this is quite impressive considering that I'm running the original 2007 version here. And the high settings for this game were never really optimized. It was really built for PCs that didn't exist yet. However, a chip like the M1 Max with its 32 GPU cores can definitely take care of this game even running under a compatibility layer. So the next game I'll be testing has been requested a lot. This is Total War Warhammer 2. So this is the strategy game set in the Warhammer universe which combines real-time battles with a turn-based overworld. So I'm running this game at 1080p with the Ultra preset which is pretty much everything turned up to the highest setting. On the strategic overall benchmark, we are getting just over 100 frames per second. This kind of performance is really great because the closer we get to 120 frames per second, the more we can take advantage of the 120 hertz ProMotion display, which is going to make all of this gameplay look really smooth on your MacBook Pro screen. And when we get to the performance of an actual in-game battle, the frame rate is going to drop a little bit due to all of the on-screen elements that are being rendered at the same time. Just remember that this frame rate is going to be a little bit variable depending on how many units are appearing on screen at once and what spell effects are being used and how many armies there are on this particular map. So overall, I'd say that Warhammer 2 runs fantastically on the M1 Max chip. So the next game is Cities Skylines, and this is a game that was also requested a ton in the comments. And to be honest, I don't actually know much about how to play this game properly. I do remember how to play SimCity 2000, but I don't think there are that many transferable skills to this game. So instead of trying to build my own city from scratch, which I don't think I'm capable of doing, I've simply gone ahead and downloaded somebody else's map. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the Steam Workshop page where I got this map from. In terms of settings, I'm basically running this at 1080p and I've cranked all the settings up to the highest. So this map is fairly densely populated at a population of around 25,000. And when we're looking at it from this overview, the frame rate is not too bad, about 40, 50 frames per second. When we actually get a bit closer, the frame rate will drop a little bit due to the rendering of all of these smaller elements on screen. So to all the City Skylines players watching right now, please leave a comment and let me know if you think that this game is performing well on the M1 Max chip. So next up is CSGO. So it's been a few years since I last played Counter-Strike. The last version I really played properly was Counter-Strike Source. And as you can tell, I'm completely out of practice. I'm very bad at this game. So CSGO is one of the few competitive shooters that you can actually play on the Mac operating system online with the rest of the CSGO community. So the general consensus amongst CSGO players is that you want to maximize performance as much as possible in order to be competitive. And I'm running this particular section of the game in 1080p. And I basically turned down every single setting so I can squeeze as much performance out of this game as possible. So generally speaking, the map frame rate is around 100 frames per second. And when we go into an actual firefight, it dips down into the 70 to 90 frames per second range. So I also tried the popular setting 1024 by 768 with a stretched 4 by 3 aspect ratio. And this does increase performance by quite a lot. And it's supposed to improve your gameplay. However, it didn't really do much for me. I still died at every moment. So the choice of whether to use the M1 Max to actually play this online is really up to you. The M1 Max is definitely capable of the frame rates. So next up is Batman Arkham City. Now this game is a little bit old. It was released in 2011. So the reason I'm including this game is because it is one of the few macOS titles that includes an in-game benchmark. And what's interesting is that I can compare it to the benchmark that I did for my M1 MacBook Air with eight CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM and eight GPU cores. And we get a substantial improvement of performance over that. I'm running this benchmark at the high detail mode with basically everything turned up to the maximum. And even the base M1 MacBook Air was perfectly capable of maxing out at 60 frames per second. 
and anything over that would have been a waste. And of course, the MacBook Pro with the ProMotion display will take advantage of the full 120 hertz. So the calculated average frame rate shows a jump from 75 frames per second to 125 frames per second. And this represents a 66% increase in frame rate. This is a little bit disappointing considering how much more the M1 Max costs compared to the base M1 MacBook Air. However, Batman Arkham City is still very much well worth playing, even if it is just to experience the 120Hz display. If you do decide to buy this game on Steam, you will receive a macOS port, even though it's not listed on the Steam page. This is because the license for the porting house Feral Interactive has expired. However, the publisher of the game has not updated the Steam page, and nor have they removed the macOS port. So therefore, even if you buy the Windows version of this game, you'll get your macOS port too. So last up is GTA 5. Now I did a performance comparison video a few days ago and we were all waiting to see what the M1 Max was capable of. So obviously GTA 5 is a Windows game and it's also running through the crossover compatibility layer. So there is gonna be some performance loss here. However, despite the overhead of having to run this game through crossover, what I can definitely say is that out of all of the Apple hardware that's available to us, including the Apple Silicon Max, the M1 Max chip runs Grand Theft Auto 5 the best out of all of them. So the settings I'm using for the game are the default ones. I'm just running this at 1080p with most of the options turned off, which is why the game looks fairly plain, but it's consistent with my earlier videos. So basically what I've done here is put together all of the GTA 5 benchmarks for every Apple Silicon Mac that I can get my hands on. So on the right, I have the M1 Max, which is the computer that I've been testing on this whole time. On the top left, we have the new M1 Pro with the base configuration. To the right of that, we have the mid-tier M1 Pro, which has 16 GPU cores instead of 14. And at the bottom of that, we have the M1 MacBook Air with eight GPU cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. So you can definitely see a startling difference with the M1 Max chip. In this benchmark, it's regularly hitting over 120 frames per second and consistently over 100. And this is a huge difference over the original base M1 MacBook Air and also of the new M1 Pros as well. So in my previous videos, I've always said that GTA 5 on crossover is a little bit of a pain to get working. You have to use a controller because of a keyboard bug and you can't use a legitimate version, you have to use a cracked version. However, that's all changed as of just last night. It has just been discovered that the latest nightly build of crossover is able to run the Rockstar Social Club DRM. And therefore, we can use our legitimate Grand Theft Auto 5 Steam versions of the game and run this through crossover, which has much greater performance than playing this game through parallels. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for my tutorial video on exactly how to do this. This is on my second channel. I'm trying to monetize this channel right now. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. So if you do find this video useful, please like and subscribe to that channel and you'll be really helping me out. So the ability to use the Rockstar Social Club means that GTA Online also might be available to play. So I've been trying this out on my M1 Max and it's running at an okay frame rate. There's a lot of overhead with the Rockstar Social Club DRM and the multiplayer world does tank the frame rate a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily try this yourself because of the risk of being banned, but if you do try it and it works for you, then please leave a comment. So so anyway, if you'd like me to do any more testing on the M1 Max chip, then please leave a comment. Would you like me to do these comparisons with all of these laptops, or would you like me to do a single list of multiple different games? Anyway, thanks for watching. If you did like the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.